have your hymnals, please. Let's stand together and turn to hymn number eight, please. Hymn number eight, when morning kills the skies. My heart awakening cries, may Jesus Christ be praised. Page number eight, lift it up on the first together now. When morning kills the skies. And may God be praised by everybody who's in attendance tonight in the service. And God is good, and it's great to be in God's house. We've had a wonderful day on Family Day and the wonderful service we've had this morning. Thank you each for being in attendance, both the online listeners and the watchers and everybody here in the auditorium and a great crowd. And let's look to God and ask for his blessings upon the service tonight. I'm sorry, I'm out of breath. I was singing so high up there. Now I'm out of breath. <laughs> let's pray. Dear God, we do thank you, God, for your many mercies. And God, we are undeserving to be called children of you. And we thank you for this church where we get to come and to worship you tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would be praised by everything that's done in the service, the singing, Lord, even the announcements, the special music, and Lord, the preaching of your word. And God, we want to bring all honor and glory to you, for you are worthy of everything. And God, we thank you for your goodness again. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. You may be seated.
what a blessing. Let's sing together 260, please. 260. My God is real. They may say what they want to say, but praise God. We serve a real God. On the forest, sing it out. And there are some things. Beyond red. 
recognition. And then a crown of thorns was pressed into his brow. His back was torn apart to pay for all the crimes I'd done. So you think I'd take the time to humbly bow? How could I look upon the cross and not say thank you? How could I see his mother cry and not feel ashamed? How could I see his bleeding hands and not feel responsible? How could I look upon the cross and not say thank you, Lord, for saving my soul? Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me the
could arm themselves please with the bulletins and make their way through the house and if you miss a bulletin this evening go ahead and just raise your hand they'll be sure to get you one the North Valley Baptist School has a few a uh, few announcements I'd like to make this evening the first one is immediately following this service tonight the volleyball team will be selling sourdough bread bowls with clam chowder and perfect evening for that and that'll be sold in the courtyard we ask you to stop by be sure to get some of that support the Bulldogs volleyball team and then this Friday we have our fall festival and if you are interested in signing up for the chili cook-off or the country store immediately following the service you could see Mrs. Finera and Mrs. Moyer out in the lobby and sign up for that um, or you could also scan the QR code and sign up online. But we hope you'll participate. We hope you'll bring your family out this Friday evening. It'll be a wonderful time together. And then this Wednesday, our varsity soccer team is in our, championship, our league championship game. And it has been many years since we have had uh, the opportunity to compete in a championship game. And the game will be at 3.30. It's kind of strange to have it on a Wednesday, but that was a league scheduled event and we weren't able to move it. And the game's at 3.30, it will be over before, and we'll be celebrating before we come to church this evening. Oh, yeah. But if you are able, if you're free, right next to Levi Stadium at the soccer field there, love to have you come out, support, our, support the Bulldogs varsity team. And then if I could also just mention, we ended our fall fundraiser this last Friday. Our goal was to 
to raise money to help offset some of the costs of the school and to sustain uh, the ministry and keep our programs moving forward. And I'm so very thankful to our church and school families. Together, we raised about $33,500, and to God be the glory. Thank you so much for your investment in North Valley Baptist Schools. Brother Flood, why don't you come at this time? I want to thank our church for a great family day that we had this morning and uh, all throughout the day. And there were uh, literally scores and scores of visitors. I know on our bus, one of our uh, bus rider, uh, about a six-year-old girl, brought her dad for the very first time to church and attended Lifeline Bible class. And I know that story can be repeated, uh, again, dozens and dozens of times. I want to thank our church for that. If you, for some reason, your child did not pick up their pumpkin this morning, uh, you can still go back and pick that up in the back parking lot. Now, I'm not saying you should go pick two two or three. This is for the children who, for some reason, maybe it was, re it was raining, which was an amazing time to rain as soon as we wanted to go get our pumpkins. It was incredible, and God blessed us with the rain there at that time. But you can go back there and pick it up if you have not already done so. I also want to thank our church for just really the efforts throughout Harvest Days. It's been a great time together. We end Harvest Days the last Sunday of October next week on Western Roundup Sunday. And with that, the work is not done. There is much more work to do, not only in follow-up, but also also, this coming Saturday at 9 o'clock over in the second floor of the Commons will be our Super Saturday of Soul Winning. We have about 10,000 tracks to get out next week, and so we need every able body who's able to go out on Saturday to please do so. We'll have areas and things like that to cover and people to pair you up with if you're not already on a bus route or in a specified area. And so can I encourage you to do that next Saturday uh, for the Super Saturday of Soul Winning. And then on Sunday with the Western Roundup, please wear your Western attire, and it is our time to... I know I don't have to push that that hard. We're all very eager to go ahead and do that, and uh, we will have a good time. Maybe some kind of contest or something that we'll be running. Who looks the goofiest or something? I don't know, but we'll have a good time. The carnival for uh, for our auditorium crowd will take place right after the auditorium dismisses. You'll go pick up your children from their classes. You can go back to the back uh, parking lot where there'll be a full carnival, jump houses, concessions, and then there will be pizza and soda for 12th grade and below, as well as there will be giveaway prizes that uh, we didn't want Stu uh, stuffed out in front of the mail room this morning. Some of our giveaway prizes arrived, and so we had to hide them away in the mail room this morning. Uh, you got to watch out for those bus kids. But we, uh, we had a good time, so they're already ready to go, and we're looking forward to that time with our church family next Sunday on Western Roundup Sunday. Amen, man. I want to thank you for this past week. I mentioned it this morning, uh, missions conference, and uh, tremendous support of it. Every night the place is filled, and so many folks watched online around the globe and saw it, and it's wonderful. One of our missionaries is back tonight, and Brother Matt Stentz is right there, and he is a hero to us. He lived his life, much of it, with his parents uh, in Uganda, and now he and his wife and family have been there for so many years, raised his family there, and it's an honor to have you in church tonight. And uh, we thank the Lord for the Stentz's family. I want to make mention to you that this, and that is on the first Sunday in November, I'm going to speak to you, and I don't know the room, the, the men assign it tomorrow for me. I like to be in the auditorium because I like the deacons and their wives. I like the staff and their wives. It's the same time as choir practice, so, so I don't know how that all worked. They're getting ready for Christmas, so I don't want to hurt that. But at 5.05, I want to talk to you about being called to the ministry. And I'm all for it. But I find so oftentimes people are called to the ministry, adults in our church, and we, we put so many in the ministry. Our Christian school has almost 200 that are full-time pastorate and missionaries and serving God. But there's some criteria that we need to follow. And by the way, if you're doing nothing for God and soul winning in prayer now, God's not calling you the ministry. But I want to help us with that. I wrote a book years ago at the old property. It's about 200 things I believe and counsel. And I said, for example, some of this I cannot prove from the scripture. But it's, if you come to talk to me about my opinion on something, here's what I'm going to tell you. For example, there's nothing in the Bible that says you hold the door for a woman. There's nothing in the Bible that says that, but we do that. There's some things that we do in America. By the way, you know one thing we do in America, I want all Americans to understand this too. When you walk across a, so, a, a, a crosswalk, you don't talk on the phone and just sort of casually go, yeah. you, you step it up a little bit, folks. Amen? Amen. Uh, like, duh, move it. 
Uh, cars, this is made for cars, but that's a whole nother subject. You know that book, it says, I would never encourage you to buy a new car, a vehicle for a high school kid. Save that for when he gets married or she gets married, they can buy it as a couple after they push their old clunker for about 10 years. I am for, some of you feel called a God to preach and to serve, and I think you are. There's others I think you're gonna to have to evaluate some things. By the way, uh, if um, one of the things I'll say, I think you ought to all get a bus route and build a bus route before you try to go build the church. Thank you, and I know you, I'll be very kind. I want to give you about 20 items to consider about a call of God on your life. And I want this to be a sending station. We send them out all the time. And I'm very grateful for that. Uh, we have 50, we're down this year, 55 of our own kids in Bible college this year training for full-time work. We graduated a large senior class in college last year. And we normally have over 60. And so I'm all for this. But I'm for doing something now before you go off to do something later. And uh, I, hope, I hope it'll be a wonderful time. I have an announcement in the bulletin on uh, next Sunday. This Wednesday, it's the last at 6.30 is service. And our service uh, is from generally 6.30 till uh, 7.40, 7.35. It's the last uh, lesson and message on the Mount of Olives. Isn't it amazing how we've been studying that? And then our Lord is teaching from the Mount of Olives and everything he talked about whether the end times or whether tribulation or the day of desolation or Armageddon is in there or the rapture, and it's all in there. And, and then uh, the uh, millennial reign of Christ. And uh, I look forward to closing it out this coming uh, Wednesday with you. I want to, uh, Doug, I saw you right over here, you and your wife. God bless you. We're here this morning and back tonight. We just moved up here from San Diego. And then Brother Doug right over here. God bless you. You never miss. You're here. And uh, I saw the Martinez's. We're glad you're here, Dr. Martinez, and your family. And we had folks say the Spanish ministry is at their property tonight over at the other property. Uh, Brother, uh, Brother Sloan sent me a picture just packed over there. They had 15 full first-time families, entire families, 15 there. And, uh, and they're averaging about 15 families a week, new coming every week. They had several families saved today. Uh, they sent me a group. I probably, if I knew how to get it to the men there, we should have played it up here singing on that platform. It was just beautiful. I wept. It was a blessing to hear. And thank God for what he's doing there. How about 411? This became real popular when I was a young boy in the 1950s. How about your heart? Is it right with God? I think you'll enjoy it. Let's sing it together on the first stanza. Sing it together.
time, 1950, 437. We'll begin on the course 437. Many things about tomorrow. We'll just sing one stanza. I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Try it on the course on that second page. Many things. Sing it. with several ladies before church. They said, now, is it cold? And so many ladies said, oh, no, it's not cold in here. And the other said, it's freezing in here. You can hang me. So we'll check sections here. Ladies, how many is too cold in here? Let's see. All right. How many think it's just right? Oh, brother. Over here in this section, too, too, too cold. Mostly under the balcony, okay? Just perfect. The perfect Sabbath. All right. I'm trying to satisfy you folks. You know how hard it is to satisfy a woman? You know how hard that is? <laughs> Real easy, right, fellas? I'm writing a book. Brother Doug, I'm writing a book on everything I know about women. It's 472 pages. They're all blank. All right, here we go. Nothing in them yet. Uh, too cold? How many ladies? Too cold. How many's too hot? How many's just right? You're not going to believe this, the just right Sabbath. How many is too cold over here? A mother and a daughter. All right. How many is just perfect? One last one. Too cold, too cold. Ladies, let's see. Just right. You figured out. Well, guys, you know what you do with the temperature. Just do it. I don't know. <laughs> It sounds good. Balcony, is it okay up there? How about just one stanza, then the offering? I don't know about tomorrow, sing. I don't know. And ushers come, if you will. We'll get in the message momentarily right after the offering. We'll get the kids on their way. 
Pray for the Spanish tonight. I'm always burdened for them. Pray for the sick in the church. We have a list that we're given last night at men's prayer meeting. And to pray for all these great, great needs. Last Sunday, next Sunday in this fall campaign, Father, bless the preaching to follow. And thank you for the great crowd and all our friends that are uh, really just, uh, it's amazing watching around the globe right now. Bless them, we pray, dear missionaries on fields. I pray that uh, some of them, it's already Monday, most of them it's Monday. And I just pray to be real near to them. And uh, they might know that, God, you know all about tomorrow. You know all about our tomorrow here. God, I pray for Israel tonight. Help them in their tomorrow, please. Bless the message, the offering. God, there's such great needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Two one six. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Children, you get ready as we sing the first verse. Two hundred and sixteen. Lift it up. Sing it on the first. Two one six. Sing it together. Shout.
Christ who gives me strength, but sometimes I wonder what he can do through me. No great success to show, no glory on my own, yet in my to let me know his strength is perfect when our strength is gone he'll carry us when we can't carry on raised in his power strong his strength is perfect his strength is perfect we can only know the power that he when we truly see how deep our weakness goes, his strength in us begins when ours comes to an end. He hears our humble cry and proves again. His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can't carry on. Raised in His power, the weak be come strong his strength is perfect his strength is perfect raised in his power the weak become strong his strength this perfect his strength is perfect amen thank you Vanessa thank you we'll let the orchestra join you we're in your Bibles tonight Isaiah 43 in a moment when you get there we'll ask you to stand we're going to read it together Isaiah 43 <clears throat> It's such a joy and a privilege to be your pastor and to see what God's doing in our church. And I trust that, uh, I trust that Missions Conference will have a bearing on our life this week. I hope we'll pray for missionaries. I want to thank the media department. They put all those missionaries in their photos. And they do it every year, but I updated my prayer journal with them this week. And it's a wonderful thrill to have that with my uh, prayer time. And uh, let's pray for missionaries. Uh, pray for their service, pray for their safety, pray for their finances, all these things, and uh, pray for the touch of God upon their life. Pray for their families, that God will use them, and uh, I feel so honored to have the Stences family here tonight. My goodness, what a, what a blessing. Uh, we have clam chowder afterwards. If you could stay, I'm buying for you. It's, uh, oh my goodness, uh, it's, it's great stuff. We look forward to that. I believe God's going to help us tonight with this truth from the Word of God. Let's stand together, please. We're going to read together verses 1 through 7. Isaiah 43. And then I'll take you to a little bit later. Keep right, right here. Stay here for a while. But we'll take you to a parallel text in Ephesians. 
and I hope this would be a help to all of us. 43, chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. Let's stay together. Pause at the commas, the colons, the semicolons, the periods. Ready? Begin. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee. Tonight, before we have prayer, I realize this is a text that deals with Israel, and I'm not speaking on Israel tonight, but I realize it's a text to Israel. And the prophet that preached Isaiah for 62 years and had zero success, he just kept preaching, and he was preaching to Israel. They never repented. They never got right. But God still made some promises to Israel, and that's an entire another message. But it is a text that deals with that land and those people. But I want to make a personal application tonight in your life and in my life. What, what tonight is the purpose of our lives? You see, well, he's going now, he's going to go ask us to be pre- I'm fulfilling the call of God on my life But my purpose is not necessarily just to be a pastor. My purpose is not necessarily to be a Sunday school teacher. My purpose is not not necessarily to be just a husband or a father or a grandfather. Until we figure out our purpose, we'll never figure out the rest. I never ask that I'd be a good husband first in my prayer life. I ask that I'd be a man of God, God's man. For if I'm not right with God, I'll never be right with my wife. Though she's the easiest person in the world to live with. And it's just an amazing thing that she would reach, I feel, down to marry me. And be alongside of me all these years. I want to be a good husband, but that's not my main purpose. I hope we'll learn something from the Word of God tonight while we're here. I'm grateful for people that give money to the church, but that's not necessarily our purpose. That could be a gift that God gave you at salvation, the gift of giving. Our Father, tonight as we approach this text, I pray that we would learn something from the Word of God that we could carry with us through life. I want to fulfill the purpose that you have for me the principal thing. And I pray that our eyes would be open to this this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. God gives us in this text the purpose of life. And it's buried right in the middle of one particular verse we read. And until we get this correct, all the rest will not fall into order. It's found in verse number seven. As God speaks, even everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Everything we do in life is for the glory of God Almighty. It's not just to fulfill your task in life. 
everything we do, that in all things, right here, this has been our church verse since 1977, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Everything is about his glory. That word glory, you'll find it in, in, in the Bible 465, 64 times. And glory, glory is just simply where, where we bring all praise, all honor, all adoration, all majesty to God's name in every circumstance of life. Your marriage needs to be bringing glory to God. Your job needs to be bringing glory to God. Uh, our health situations need to be bringing glory to God. Uh, going to Bible college, it needs to be for His glory. Everything we do is for His glory. Uh, sometimes I don't think we even know the, the songs we sing. Uh, down at the cross where my Savior died. The course, glory to His name. What is that? L uh, lift Him up. Majesty on high, supreme, glory to his name. Glory to glorious things of thee are spoken. Good things, majesty, greatness things, Zion city of our God. The priority as we walk out these doors within a uh, little short time tonight from now, the, 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 the purpose of leaving here tonight is in every moment of every day this week to bring glory to God. Amen. When the phone call you receive turns your world upside down, it's to bring glory to God. When, when sorrows come your way and my way, it's to bring glory for God. Uh, when everything takes place in our life, and the purpose is that we might not have a vocation and not necessarily have a ministry and not necessarily have a class, though that's the opportunity we get to serve God, it has to be done with the foundation of bringing all glory to God. Look at verse number seven. For even every one that is called by my name. Well, we can apply that to us. I know this was to Israel, but we're called by his name. I have created. God created me. God created you. We cannot believe in evolution. We're not a mistake that uh, just a big bang theory. In the beginning, God created. You're a created being. And to be a, to be a, 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 a created being, we are God's creation. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Keep your hand right here. Let, let's see it real quickly. And, um, and, and as we look at it tonight, Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the things of the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God, what's the next word? Created man in his own image. In the image of God, what's the word? God created him. Male and female created him. Cre creation is to make something out of nothing. Try to do that. Try to make a car out of nothing. But our God created us. You're a created being. Take your Bibles, please. Go to Psalm 139. You know the text we're going to read, perhaps. But Psalms 1, what, Psalm 139, as you turn to the book of Psalms and you look at Psalm 139, verse 13, Thou hast possessed my range, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. There's a creation. Marvelous are thy works which thou my soul knoweth right. My substance was not hid from thee. Before there was an arm or a leg or a foot or an eye or an ear, my substance in my mother's womb was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Thine eye seeth my substance, yet being unperfect. Why? It's not all developed yet. It takes nine months. In the book of my members were written, the continuance were fashioned as there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God, how great is the sum. God creates us. <laughs> Evolution, there's always things changing. Man's posture changed, they said, through the years. But guess what? Every person that's born has ribs on this side and ribs on this side. And toes down here and toes down here and knees here and hip bone, the knee bone connected to uh, Ezekiel, all right. And, uh, and uh, we, 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 there's no uh, evolving. There's no changing. 
I don't mean this to be rude at all. An eye is not the back of the head. God, puts, God put our eyes right here. We're created. And, and God said back in Isaiah, I created you. I formed you. And so he has a right to say, I want, your, I want praise from you. If I don't give praise to God, who's will? If you as a Christian do not give praise to God, who will? The unsaved? The heathen? The atheist? The God-hater? The evolutionist? The materialistic person? The, the person that does not believe there is a God? Uh, the, the people that believe in, in Confucius or, or Muhammad or any other religion? Uh, are they, are they the, Hinduism, is that the ones that are going to bring honor to God? No. God created me, and I need to be aware of the fact that he created me. Look in Isaiah, where we're at. We'll, we'll get where we're going here. Isaiah chapter 43. And he says, I, I have created him, and I have formed him. To form is exciting because to, to form something is to fashion it. Remember, the earth was without form and void. The Bible says Genesis 1. God, God created it, but then he had to form it. The, the text would be good with that if you wanted to read it this week. It would be Jeremiah chapter 18. The potter puts the clay on the wheel, and they spin the wheel, and he forms the clay. God is allowing circumstances in our life, people in our life, to help form us in and conform us to the image of Christ. I, I've been formed. I've been created. For what purpose? For his glory. Paul suffered. Historians tell us that Paul was perhaps about four foot ten. He had an eye condition. Apparently it was, it was a, a, a gross thing. But Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I believe it's verse number 9. Most gladly, therefore, what's the next word? I forget it. Well, I glory, there's that word again. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in what? My bank account. Boy, I just feel like praising God. I got, I got money in my bank. Oh, I praise the Lord. I got a raise. Oh, I praise God. Now, you know, God's so good. Well, yes, yeah, sure. Praise the Lord. Anybody can do that. But Paul wasn't glorying in his bank account. Praise the Lord. Uh, the, the throngs are coming and they like me. No, they're stoning him and cast him out of the city. And, and Demas was on the missionary trip with them. And the next time Paul is in a jail getting ready to die, they, they sent word, Demas hath forsaken thee. Having loved this present world, that's a heartache. You have your right hand man that you love and you care for. You begin crisscrossing uh, 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 that, that area and start establishing churches, and he forsakes you for the world. Paul said, Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities. I'm going to glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. For this thing I have besought the Lord thrice, three times. But he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. And that's why Paul said, I glory in this. Most people, you live long enough. I'm not saying this to be rude at all to anybody. We wind up with canes and walkers and wheelchairs. I had a doctor in my 30s said, you'll be in a wheelchair before you're 60. It's just the way it's going to happen. Well, in 10 more years, I'll be 60. <laughs> you, you know how life goes? You get older. And, and most people die, do not die healthy. Most die with ailments. You say, well, that's depressing. I would hope that if that's the path God takes me in and down the path of bedridden, I would hope if I'm in a nursing home facility someday, I would hope that I could bring glory to God. Mean along. 
The old building over here where the Spanish is tonight, that building was right next door to the used to be called Highland Hospital, and they've changed the name four different times in the 48 years we've been here. Sister Jackie, you remember you worked there for many years. Do you know that I'd go over there a couple, two, three times a week. Mina Long was a lady, she, uh, I don't know what the word would be called, like almost a itinerant, she wasn't a preacher at all, but she went all over North Dakota. Do you know that North Dakota right now has 2,000 500 little white clapboard churches sitting empty. Their national monuments are monuments to the eclair, so you can't tear them down. One guy got so upset about this little white clapboard church next door to his house, and he said, man, it's falling down. They said, we can't do anything about it. And he said, will you sell it to me? And he bought it for $450. I think if God wants to call you somewhere, some of you ought to think about going to North Dakota and buying four of those buildings maybe 50 miles apart each one, and then preach in all four churches every Sunday. Well, that sounds hard. That's the ministry, missionary. Going up in those villages, those pictures you showed us last week, someone's got to go there. Someone's got to go as far as you can with a vehicle, then walk in. I was just amazed. And see those little people up there being reached with the gospel, singing? Yeah, so, 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 so I, I, I think of how, how that God, 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 God has things. I'd go see Mina, and Mina was one of these ladies. She was in North Dakota, and she'd just go on Sunday morning and afternoon. She went to four or five different little church buildings, and, and, and she would teach Sunday school. I don't know what organization was she was with or whatever, but I'd go by to see Mina, uh, a, a white-haired little lady. I'd go by to her room. I know right where it's at. You come in the door. You walk this way. I think that ward is now dementia, but it wasn't back then. And, and you go to her room, and most of the time, she had her, all the time, she Bible was open. She had her hymn book. She gave me a book about the hymns of the uh, of the Bible, uh, hymns that are written in our songbook, and it's in my in my study. This was back in '76, I think. And you know, she was saying, I said, Mina, let me, let me read some scripture with you. I began to read the scripture. She knew, she knew most of it. And she could quote along with me. And, and then I said, let's sing together. And all those years I've gone over there, to, I, I, I never sing in, the, in, a, in a room with the door shut. And, and I never sing quiet. Quiet or quietly? Quietly. How many vote for quietly? How many vote? That's too hot in here. Okay, we're, we've done a lot of voting tonight, a lot of voting tonight. I don't know about you folks. I keep the door open. You know, when God has blessed you with such a good voice like mine, <laughs> for visitors, I know I don't have a good voice, so don't worry about it. I like to just sing. You know what I found out all the time? Normally, people would come in the room. I'd sing, Mina, how about, and I can remember this one. We, my wife would sing it with my dad before he passed away. There's a land that is fairer than day. And you sing slower with nursing home people. And by faith, we can see it afar. She'd sing with me. For the Father waits over the way. And then some folks would come in. Sometimes some nurses would come in to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. Maybe I'll be tested one day. Maybe I'll live at that facility. A pastor years ago, Pastor Art California, the a church where it was the first church to have AM radio broadcasting his service throughout the state. And it was a, a church that's a Baptist church and, and, and he was, I, I remember as a, I remember in the 50s him preaching in the 60s. But one day he got too old for his church and he died over here in a rest home. Large church, thousands and thousands. 
He died over here in a rest home all by himself. Nobody coming to see him. You know, I would think some of you folks would come to see me. But you live long enough, you're going to get busy. I hope, Brother Ray, if that happens to me and I can't get to church, I hope I don't get bitter at the people that have been so good to me. Where are they? Well, you're in life. That's what you're doing. I hope I can find contentment in bringing glory to God. Amen. I hope I can, I hope I can maybe get in a wheelchair. And I know it sounds depressing. I hope I can go up and down the hallways and, and, and sing and say, I've got a Bible study coming up in one hour. Get your wheelchair and get in there. Wouldn't that be something? I don't know what the future is. Many things about tomorrow. I don't seem to, but I know who holds tomorrow. We sang about it. And I know who holds my hand. And God allows us to have difficulties on the pathway of life. One reason is to train our children how to react to those difficulties. This is how you handle the difficulty. You trust in God. You bring glory to God. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good. Tell it that others may know. Tell them his blessing and tell them his love and tell them his coming from heaven above. The Lord is good. Look at the verse. My job as a, being a created person and being a formed person, God forms me. You'll see that word about eight times in this chapter and the next chapter. God formed us. He, he molded us. He's molded us to this. But the main purpose why he's molding us, that my life, whatever experiences he face, can bring glory to him. That's my job. He created us. He didn't create me to pastor a large church solely. He created me for his glory. I'm to give glory to him. Give him the glory. I can hear you teenagers singing it. Well, what he's done in your heart. He took me from sin and shame and gave me a new start. I'm to give him the glory. In my heart. Lord, be glorified, be glorified in my heart. Lord, be glorified today. I hope as I live, if the Lord allows us all to live this week and the rapture doesn't, I hope, I hope we can give him the glory in every circumstance. We have the book out from the publications, Brother Reamers. Alexander, how he crisscrossed with the great evangelists in the late 1800s and the early 1900s to different continents, and we preach, and we have the picture of him with a 3,500 voice choir in Australia. And everywhere they went, they had a 1,000 voice choir, a 2,000 voice choir. And they made that, uh, that song so very famous in the early 1900s. Uh, they would sing it at the train station. These men would take what they called their grip, their suitcase, and they'd be standing on the platform, and you'd hear it. When all my labors and trials are o'er, and I am safe on that beautiful shore, just to be near the door, dear Lord I adore, will through the ages be glory for me. Oh, that will be glory for me. It was known everywhere over Europe, all over London. It was known all over Australia. It was known in the countries in that uh, European area, the, the glory song. My life, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the senses have done with their lives. Uh, great mysteries, oh yes. I'll tell you what they've done. They've lived their life with the, to the glory of God. Too much hit and miss. I'm on, I'm off. Praise the Lord. I won money. I got a raise. I got this. I'm going there. I got a new car. I got a wife. I got a husband. We have new kids. That's all great. But the purpose is to bring glory to God with all of that. Tonight I want you to realize that glory is just praise. I, I'm to praise God. Praise Him in the sunshine hour. Praise Him when the difficult times come. You know, the joy of pastoring a church almost five decades. I've watched 
People endure hardness. Many of you as good soldiers of Jesus Christ, I've watched it. I've watched you go through the valley of sorrow and heartache. And I'll tell you what, I've watched many more people go through the same heartache and sorrow or less, and I've watched them walk away from God. I'm done with God. You do any type of door knock, and if you find someone that's saved, and they say, no, we're not going to church, no, normally they trace it back. I've had, it, I've had them tell me through the years, I, my mother was dying, I prayed, God didn't answer my prayer, I'm done with God. So now God works for you. Now God has to figure out what your plan is so that, you can, that he can give you all 100% your plan. No, ladies and gentlemen, the glory is bringing praise, bringing honor, bringing excellence to the name of God. Give him the glory. Say, well, I'm not pastoring a large church. Well, then bring glory in a small church. I think of some of our preachers across this country. Uh, They're not in an area with 2 million people or 9 million people in the Bay Area like we have. And, And they're in areas where there's a Baptist church on every corner. But some of them go out to the hollers and there's just, just handfuls of people. You know what, they're, they're just as important as a pastor that might have a large church. A, a, a large church is just as important as someone that has a small church. But regardless of the importance of the man, the goal is to bring glory to God. Amen. Turn with me in closing. I want you to go to this text in Ephesians chapter one. I went to a Bible college in the 60s that was one year old. I did not want to go to that college. My dad, the, uh, my, my dad said, son, you owe me the 13th year. My dad was not dominant. My dad was, he didn't really, he, he didn't tell me a lot of things to, to do with my life. He just, he just lived it. My dad's the most wonderful man in memory. I think of him every day. Some of the decisions, I think, what would my dad do? My dad was never part of a church split. Never, people would come and go, but he was never part of that. He was never part of criticizing people, criticizing the pastor. He was not part of any of that. None of it. And my dad said, son, I'd like to go to this Bible college. I didn't want to go to that Bible college. I wanted to go to Tennessee Temple. That's my plan. But I never told my dad. My dad said, I'd like you to consider going here. I said, would you like me to go there? He goes, I, I, I'd kind of like, I know the president. I know the, the work there. I, I'd kind of like you to go there, son. But you're going to have to figure out what God wants. You know what? I say this to students all the time. I'm not trying to be irreverent. I didn't need to pray. Why would I pray about where to go to Bible college? I'm a 17-year-old kid. I have no idea, you know, when the sun comes up or where it sets in the east or the west or whatever it goes. I, I don't know. I don't know diddly squat. There I go with Greek words again. I, I want, I want, I, my dad had, I had such confidence in my dad. He had proven to me almost for 18 years. I think I left a day before I was 18. I really never got back home, never lived at home after that ever again. But my dad loved me. He prayed for me more than I prayed for myself. My dad was godly, holy, my mother. I could hear him. Their bedroom was up against me. I could hear him at night. We would already had prayers as a family. I could hear him every night praying together. My dad said, I'd kind of like you to go there. I'm not going to pray about it. I'm just going to go there. Until the day he died, I never told him. I wanted to go to Tennessee Temple. But this is something that I followed my dad's leadership, and three years later, I was working as a music director on the weekends in a church in Illinois. And there was the most beautiful, gorgeous girl on the piano, playing the piano, the preacher's daughter. And she played that piano. My heart was so burdened for her because I can remember praying for her family in my college dorm because her mom was dying with cancer. I would get these prayer requests and I'd get our guys, I was responsible for that. I was supposed to gather the guys together for prayer and we would pray for different things. 
But I'll never forget that pastor. I didn't know him, but I, I kept thinking eight kids and a 45-year-old preacher's wife dying. I got my, I can remember, honey, I can remember praying in my dorm. Little did I know that God had planted for me the right person for my life in that church. And about a year later, we opened our eyes and she realized what a good catch I was. All that beautiful hair like I have now. And, and we've made mistakes on the journey of life. But I can tell you this, I really believe God gave me a lady who wants to bring glory to God. Amen. How in the world do you, I, I'm sorry to keep referring to you, Brother Stan, how do you drag a woman to Uganda unless she has a desire for the glory of God? And God's blessed your work. It's amazing. Our goal was in life. Well, I got to college. We didn't have an auditorium yet. We had an old Roman Catholic school that they had sold. 62 acres. Huge building on it for $162,000. I'll never forget that. Landscape beautifully. And we had a gymnasium. A little small, tiny. Much smaller than the one we have on Clyde Avenue. And that was our chapel. And on those brick walls, it, it, it was Ephesians 1.12. You're there, Ephesians 1.12. And I'd see that every day in chapel. The Bible says in verse 12 that we should be to the praise of His glory. That's the same thing who, who first trusted in Christ. That's the same verse as Isaiah 43.7. I'm to be the praise of his glory. That, that, that verse has stuck with me all these years. Everything needs to be for his glory. My sorrow, my, my victories, my betrayals, everything's for his glory. Uh, look, look what he says, what takes place. Here's why I can live to his glory. Well, verse 13, in whom you trust it, that's the same word as verse 12, in whom you trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel, one, salvation. I'm saved. That's why I can have his glory is preeminent. I'm saved. And then I'm sealed. And then I have the spirit of God. Good night. Those three things in that one verse alone was all it was. But there's much more than that. But I've, I've been saved. Thank God for salvation, eternal security, and been sealed. Uh, there's, there's no, uh, Re Revelation chapter 5, the seven scroll seal. It was, only one could open that book. And it was Jesus Christ Almighty. I'm secure. I'm saved. And I also have the Spirit of God. Cancer, consequently, I should give all glory to God. That's your job. That's my job. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 1.12 that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified in you. My job is to bring him glory this week. Your job as we leave, your assignment, my assignment is to, let's bring glory to his name. Honor to his name. Praise to his name. Lifting up his name. And may we do that individually. But as it says in Ephesians 5, 25, that he might present it to himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Let's be a church without spot or wrinkle this week. Let's keep sin out of here. So what's your task? Here's your homework assignment. Here's my homework assignment. Because I've been created. I've been formed by God's own hand. My life needs to bring glory back to his name. Let's stand together, please. Our Father, I thank you that you've placed this scripture before us tonight. And I pray that we might all this week do our very best when we're frustrated with someone, we're in a line at a store and it's so long or 
somebody's returning something that's wasting our time. Someone's texting through the green light when we want to get moving. Or when the accountant says you owe more taxes, we made a mistake. Or when the doctor says you have something we need to take a look at. Or when a child breaks our heart or a marriage falls apart. That circumstance is not glory. But may the circumstance point our lives back to thy name. And may we magnify your name. Whether it be bent over or bedridden or a cane or a crutch or a, or a walker or a wheelchair. Or perhaps one day dementia, Alzheimer's will set in. We've seen so many people through the years, and yet it seems like when they, you sing a chorus, sometimes they can even sing with you because they've had a life of bringing glory to you. Most gladly will I glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Can I ask you to bring glory to God this week? Teenagers, we win a soccer team, a game, a championship, we lose it. I, I'm not for losing, but I am in everything trying to bring glory to God. The altar is open tonight. If you're here to be saved, will you come? If you're here to just want to dedicate this week to God, how, how important it is to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is, uh, uh, which is in heaven. Everything ought to be not to me, pointing to me, pointing to my successes or my failures. It ought to be all about pointing to Jesus. Everything He has done, everything He's doing. Our Father, this week I don't want to fail you in my assignment. I want to do my best to use that word glory to praise, to magnify, to lift, to exalt excellence in the name of Jesus. Help me with people, even at a checkout stand, if I'd be in a place like that, to immediately have scripture come to my mind and share it with them. I think of every gospel track I've passed, so many this week, and I yet, I think everyone without exception was kind about it, thoughtful about it. I pray that every person I uh, come into their presence this week, I might bring joy to their life. May people say there's something different about that man. I'm ashamed of many times that people could not say that. But I pray it's because that this week I want to try to do my best to glorify you in every circumstance. Thank you that everything that's happening in our lives is Father appointed. That God, you have appointed us this moment. Every trial, fiery trial, your word calls it, it's filtered through a hand of a loving God that loves us. God, you allow these fiery trials. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that shall try some of you. Oh, but may we in that fiery trial bring glory to that name of Jesus Christ. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I've read recently so many accounts of the martyrs that died. And you've read the one where the man the next day was going to be set on fire at the stake. That night he put his finger at a candle. And I had to withdraw it right away. He said, I can't take it, I can't take it. How am I going to do when I set my body on fire? They said as he went to the stake the next day, he went singing and praising God and bringing all glory to God. 
I, I beg you to seek the glory of God. Every conversation, every event, in your family, in your home, put it all to Jesus this week. Let's take our psalm books there and straighten them up if you would, if you will, and we'll uh, be dismissed momentarily. I feel like I'm, we say, preaching to the choir. This is the best church in the world to give glory to God. But when circumstances come and sorrows come, don't let it derail you. You pray for me, and my wife, and our, our marriage, our home, our life. I, I want to I wanna live my entire life to the glory of God. I saw that sweet, dear mother and father both pass away in the same little room, same little bed, a couple years apart from one another. And even at the end, they were such sweet Christians. I've got it on my phone where my wife's singing with my dad, and he's stumbling on the sweet by and by, but he gets those words on the chorus real well. And oh, he'd light up. He'd just light up. One day I went in his room and I was visiting him and went to see him. I said, Dad, what are you playing? He goes, my mother had passed away. And he goes, oh, she's playing that piano all day long. And he's talking about mom as somebody on a CD playing it. And I said, well, what is she playing? She's playing those hymns, those songs. Yeah, bless his heart. I, I want to go out that way, loving the hymns, loving the Bible, loving people. You're going to go out as a grump or as a kind person. So let's practice now because in time it shows up what we are. How about, how about just one stanza, a cappella? Pass me not, O gentle say, your hear my humble. clam chowder. You don't have to stay, but uh, if it's cold or rainy, uh, we've got the courtyard open. It's probably going to be fine. But if it's cool or rainy, you can sit in the first or second floor of the dining hall there. Just clean up afterwards. Clam chowder. Now that sounds good. You know how it, if you just put whipped cream on it and a cherry on top, <laughs> butterscotch and hot chocolate. Ooh, that sounds great. I love you folks. You are the best people in all the world. God bless you. You're dismissed.